that. Good morning, everyone. I'll finish that thought later. <laughs> uh, such a habit to hit all the buttons and forget a mid sentence. All right, so good morning, everybody. Uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday, we played quite a bit with the hips. Um, we're going to do a little bit more of that work today, uh, but probably not quite as much. You're going to need all of your props, your blanket, your um, strap, and your bl uh, blocks. We're going to start laying down, have your strap with you, and then come on down to the floor. And keep your knees bent. You can take your feet wide on the yoga mat. Maybe draw the knees into the middle. See how that feels, that slight internal rotation. Uh, the shoulders nice and wide. The hips snuggle down into your mat so that you feel even weighted on both sides of the sacrum. And then notice your breath. And if you're comfortable, I want you to start with the arms in cactus pose so that we right away start to open the chest and the shoulders uh, while we're resting here. But don't like force the arms, just let them be comfortable. Relax through the fingers, the hands, the shoulders. And again, maybe draw the shoulder blades down just a little bit to help open the chest. And find your breath and just notice, especially if you have feet wide and knees in, how does that feel on your back, your lower back? How does that feel in the sacrum? Um, as I started to mention, we worked uh, hips last class and we're gonna play a little bit more in this realm today. We're just gonna move all through the lower body, but still notice and keep the upper body open. So nice long back of the neck, make sure your chin isn't right, raising up toward the ceiling. Take some nice deep breaths. Start to get centered into the yoga mat. Start to relax your jaw, your face, your neck, your chest, the belly. Just taking deep breaths in. and back out again. And as we practice our yoga both on and off the mat, I'm often reminded of a yogic principle called ahimsa. It's one of the, um, one of the yamas, I won't go into all those details, but one of the ways of living in yoga and ahimsa means non-harming. And as we move through our yoga practice, we practice ahimsa, non-harming. So we don't move into poses or depths of poses that our bodies tell us are harmful. And then I think of uh, thoughts, right? The thoughts that we have, uh, what thoughts do we have that may not be to our best interest or our best health? And can we practice ahimsa there? And then of course, from those thoughts to our words and from our words to our actions, And if we have any hope of seeing shift in the world, shift, then we start with ourselves. We start with that practice of ahimsa. So we take deep breath in and we exhale it out. We relax the fingers, the shoulders. And then walk the feet in, allow the soles of the feet to come toward each other and open the knees wide. So a supine baddha or supine butterfly. 
And here, see if you can relax the hips, the legs, the knees. You can always move the feet a little further away if this is bothersome to your knees. And notice how this feels. Notice the maybe deeper arch in your back. Notice maybe the shift in the ribs, the lower ribs, moving a little more towards ceiling, not on purpose, like not uh, because you're making them, but just because we've changed the hips, we've uh, changed the angle of the hips and moved the knees out. And as you exhale, see if you can exhale into the legs. So as you exhale, see if you can relax the muscles of the legs without pushing or pulling or anything, just letting gravity take these legs where they're gonna go. So taking a deep breath in. Exhale, letting both knees and elbows go heavier toward the floor. Good, one more here, inhale, deep breath. Exhale, let him go heavy. And then moving in unison, as you inhale, both knees and elbows come to center. And as you exhale, they both go out. Inhale, knees and elbows center, give them a good squeeze. Exhale, let them go. Three more, inhale, center. Exhale, open. Inhale. Exhale, it open. One more, squeeze in and open up, good. And then roll to the right hip. So roll toward the right hip. Still the knees are apart from each other. And then take your left foot and just place it gently on top of your right foot, on that big toe side of your right foot. So you're still creating this little kind of uh, baddha konasana. It's just a whole bunch shorter. You're more on the right hip. And then drop the left knee toward the right knee. Give it a little squeeze. We're stretching the outer left hip. And then just open it up, but stay on the right hip. So when you open, you're squeezing that glute, that left glute. So close. Arms are still in cactus. You're in actually a little bit of a twist. So we're opening and squeezing, but that right hip is staying on the floor. You're on the side of that right hip. Squeeze the leg open, just two more. Drop it down, squeeze the knee toward the other knee, then open the knee to the ceiling. Last one, squeeze and open. Release the foot from the other foot. Come back to Baddha Konasana, open the knees, and then roll onto the left side hip, hip. Take your right foot on top of the left. Your left foot is um, kind of sideways on the floor. And here we go for five, but slow. Squeeze it down. You'll feel a stretch in the outer right hip. And then open it, but squeeze the right glute so that you don't roll back to your back. Good, drop down and open try to relax your face down toward the knee open and squeeze keep pressing the left knee down to the floor two more down squeeze up good last one squeeze it down and open and then release that foot come back to baddha konasana draw the knees together bring both knees to your chest Good, nice, easy breath, everybody. And then use your hands, one hand on each knee. Keep the knees bent, but draw the knees nice and wide. So it's like, again, doing about a Kanasana, but the soles of the feet are not together. And then use your hands to draw the knees in, um, hands to the inside knees to draw them out, hands to the outside knees to draw them in. Good, a few more here. And maybe start to use a little resistance. So as I push the knees in, I'm resisting. As I pull the knees out, I'm resisting. Good, just a couple more. Little tone to the belly, everybody. Open and close. Last one. Push, push, push it open. Hold here. 
So your hands are on your inside knees, tone through the belly, and I want you to gently push the knees back into your hands. Don't overdo it here. We're obviously working those inner thighs, <clears throat> right? So push the knees into the hands, but resist, keep it going. And then release the hands, take those hands to the outer knees and try to push your knees into your hands, but resist. Push really hard. I mean, not really, really hard, but at least 50% if you can push. And then keep those hands there. Bring the knees together, but really resist. Like, don't let those knees come back to center easily. Push, 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 push. And draw your knees to your chest. Good job, everybody. And then grab your strap. Your feet go to the floor. I want you to take the strap around your left foot. Take the left foot up to the ceiling. Keep your right foot on the floor. Take the strap in your left hand. Your left leg is up to the ceiling. Take the left leg out to the side and bring the right knee out to the side to counterbalance. And then right away, I want you to feel your hips and sacrum, your lower back, and rebalance those. So when we take the leg out to the side, our hips are going to shift to that side and our right hip might lift up. So I want you to come back to center. Take right hand to right inner thigh. Don't necessarily push, but just weight it down a little bit so it does not roll. So that hip does not roll to the, uh, off the floor. Good, breathe. And then both legs to center. Grab the strap with your right hand. Take the right leg across. Take the left knee across as if you were going to cross knees. And breathe. And then look at your left foot. For me, my left foot is sickling way in. And I'm going to square that hip a little bit by holding the strap in my right or my left hand instead of my right. So the foot levels out a little bit. Now push into the foot that's on the floor. So push there, extend through. You're gonna feel lots of lovely sensation through the ankle area, the foot, right? Maybe all the way up the leg as we realign that foot. Take a deep breath, keep the strap in your left hand, open the legs wide. Just one more here. And then bring it across, hold the strap in the left hand and re-level the left foot so that as you're looking at it, it's coming straight off the ankle and not sickling in towards center. Ooh, yeah, feel that, right? Kind of interesting sensation. And then release your strap, hold the pose, release the strap. Open the legs wide, no strap. And then bring everything to center, release your left foot to the floor. Oh, good. Wrap the strap around your right foot. Here we go, same thing, other side. Hold the strap in your right hand, level out the hips, take the right leg out to the right, take the left knee out to the left. <clears throat> and then re-square the hips. So not only do we wanna try to get you know, roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, roughly the same weight on the sacrum, both left and right sides, but maybe from a high-low standpoint, does your left hip hike up as your right leg goes out to the side? Just kind of notice that and see if there's a difference. And then inhale, bring them up, cross the legs, pause, take a look at that foot, grab the strap with your, whoops, with your right hand and try to re-level out the foot. <clears throat> it completely changes for me the sensation in the leg. If I let that foot sickle, it changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So notice, right, little squeeze of the inner thighs, a little tone to the belly. And then inhale, open it up nice and wide. Maybe take the left hand to the left inner thigh and just ground that thigh a little bit more, that hip a little bit more. Nice engagement of the legs, a little bit of tone to the lower belly. Find your breath, everybody. And inhale, center. Cross the legs as if you were going to cross knees. 
strap is to the um, to the right hand so that we can level out the foot. And just breathe. Maybe you're looking up at the ceiling. Maybe you're looking up at the sky, depending on where you're practicing this morning. Good. Release your strap. Hold the pose. <clears throat> Keep that foot squared. Open the legs up. No strap. Take them both wide. Level out the hips. And then bring everything to center. Release your right leg. Straighten both legs just for a second. Just to get a little bit of length and, and opening into those hip, uh, hip flexors. Oh, good. And then bend both knees. You're going to take the strap around both feet. And take the both legs up to the ceiling. And maybe level out your strap so that you have equal, uh, equal sides. Depending on your strap and the length of your strap, this might may or may not work fully. You're going to hold one end of the strap in each hand. Take both legs wide. How wide you go is up to your body and the length of your strap. But then hold on to the ends and pull a little bit on the strap so that the feet stay very flexed. <clears throat> Notice the weight on the sacrum. Notice the legs, how much internal or external ro uh, rotation you have here. You're just pausing as you stretch through those legs. Breathe. Some of you can go nice and wide here. Some of you are going to stay much more narrow, but depending on your legs, your hips, your knees. Breathe. The arms are nice and heavy. And then pull on the strap to bring those legs back to center. Release your left foot from the strap. Keep your right one. Take your left arm out to the side, out from your shoulder, and ground that shoulder. You're going to take both legs wide, <clears throat> but only one foot has the strap. Yep. Find your breath. Tone your belly. Breathe. And then isometrically try to pull the legs back to center without actually moving them. So engaging those inner thighs a whole bunch. Bring the legs back to center, switch feet. Take the strap under your left foot, take the right strap out or right foot out. Your right arm goes out to the side, grounds that side and take both legs wide. Big deep breath, nice tone to the belly, flex your feet, engage the legs. Imagine squeezing the legs back together without actually doing it. Find your breath. Squeeze the legs together. I want you to release the strap and cross the legs. They're still straight, but now one leg is on in front of the other leg. And then press the legs towards each other and keep the legs pressing up toward the ceiling. Yeah, give them a good squeeze. Bend both knees, everybody. Bring your knees to your chest. Stretch out that hip. <clears throat> Yep, maybe a little wiggle side to side. And then switch knees so your other knee is on top. Draw the knees to chest. Feel that little bit of a rock side to side. We're almost done. Good. And then release both legs. Straighten them both down to the floor. Just stretch out those hip flexors, the front of the thighs. Maybe give them a little bit of a rub. Sometimes when we have the knees bent a lot, we can get a little compression in that front hip area. And then bend both knees. <clears throat> You're going to go back to Baddha Konasana. Your hands are going to come down at your sides. Maybe you even hold on to the sides of your yoga mat and then try to push that yoga mat away from you to lengthen your spine a little bit. Draw the shoulders to the floor. Press into your feet. One, you're here. Two, from this position, you're going to lift your hips. It does not have to be very high. Right. So we're squeezing the glutes. We've got our hips lifted. I'm pressing the yoga mat away from me, finding this very strong hip uh, strengthener here. Press through the feet. Engage your hips and glutes, everybody. You got this. Find your breath. Now, if you're here and you're starting to like rock and roll a little bit, right? If you're kind of bouncing or moving, 
that is perfectly normal. If your feet are screaming at you, take those hips back down. Might just be too much pressure on those sides of the feet. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Maybe the hips come up a little bit higher and then lower everything back down to the floor. Draw the knees together. Just rock a little side to side. <clears throat> Good, last one here. You're gonna take your feet, hips width apart, hips width apart. And then you're gonna open the knees again. So it's like Baddha Konasana, but your feet are not touching, okay? Grab the sides of your yoga mat, press the shoulders down, Press into the sides of your feet, engage those hips, lift the hips off the floor. So this is a little bit of movement. We're here, bring the knees to center so that your knees are now hips width apart, your feet are flat. Drop the hips to the floor, open the knees. That's what we're doing. So lift your hips, bring the knees back to center, lower the hips to the floor. Three more here, open the knees. Press up and lift, bring the knees back to hips width, lower, got two more, open wide, lift, squeeze, feet flat, and lower the hips, last one, open, lift, draw the knees in, lower the hips, listen up, we're reversing for five and then we're done, lift those hips, you're in bridge pose everyone. Open the hips to the side. Squeeze as you lower. Bring the knees back in. Lift up, bridge pose. Open the knees to the side. Lower the hips to the floor. Squeeze the legs in. Three more. Come on. You can do it. Up and open and lower. And bring them in. Two more. Lift up. Open. <clears throat> lower the hips, bring the knees in. We only got one more. Lift up, hold. You're in bridge pose. Find your breath. Feel the, sh the thighs getting nice and long. And then roll to those outer edges of your feet. Squeeze the hips, everybody. Squeeze those glutes. And lower your knee, your hips to the floor. Bring the knees back to center, draw your knees to your chest, and then just do some knee circles here and rock all around, just roll all around uh, those hips, hips, sacrum, lower back, go the other way, and breathe. <clears throat> Good, grab your strap. <clears throat> You're gonna take the strap around both feet, take both feet up to the ceiling. Now, if your feet get a little crunchy together, that's okay. You're going to hold the strap on either side. Nice tone to the belly. And then lower your legs um, until they're, I don't know, maybe six inches or so off the floor. What I do is I wrap this strap around my hands multiple times so that my arms are outstretched the whole time. Your feet are lifted, okay? And then pull on the strap to lift yourself into a modified half boat pose. So I'm pulling on the strap. My elbows are coming to my sides. My legs are really reaching. Hold here, really squeeze that belly and then lower the torso to lift the legs. Good, just two more like that. Slowly lower. Like I said, I gotta wrap my strap around my hands a couple of times to find that length that's gonna work and hold. Squeeze in through the belly, I'm looking at my toes. Find your breath, the legs, hips, belly are active. And then lower the upper body to lift the legs. You can take those legs overhead a little bit if you wanna stretch. Last one, don't forget to breathe, push. Breathe, 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 breathe. Tone in through the belly. This is a fairly easy half boat, which is uh, kind of difficult uh, by itself. Good, lower the torso, lift the upper body. And don't you know, we're gonna do the same thing, but then we're gonna let go of the strap. So find your boat pose or half boat, it's half boat, half navasana. Breathe and then let your strap go. 
reach hands towards feet, squeeze the heck out of your belly, and then press all the way up to a seat. Woo, yeah, good job, everyone. That's a whole bunch of fun. <sighs> Roll it out. Legs are straight in front of you. Find a nice dandasana. You can take the hands behind you. Roll and open the shoulders, bless you. Good, ideally, you're gonna not use your hands. Your hands are either gonna be behind you to help support you, or they're just gonna be kind of hanging out. You're gonna take your right knee in and open it up. And then bring it up and close. Two more on this side. We've done this in the past. This uh, I don't think is really hard or really difficult. It just depends on your rotation and open and then bring it up and straighten. Good, switch right to the other side. Bring it up. Now, if you need the hands behind you to help support your pose, just take the hands behind. Bring the leg up, turn it out, bring it up and release. One more here, bring it up. Open, bring it up and release. All right, so that was the easy part. We're gonna do both legs this time. So we're working a lot with the hip muscles and the hip flexor muscles. Um, and the less we use our hands, the more we're using the muscles, right? So passive versus active movement. All right, so here we go. You're gonna bend both knees, <sighs> open them wide. Bring them both in, scoot them out. <laughs> Good. And I'm staying fairly lifted because I'm on wood here and I don't want to get a splinter. So bring them up, open, bring them in, extend out. Good. Bring them up, open, lift up, sit nice and tall, bring them up and straighten. Let's just do two more. See if you can move from this belly, right? Squeeze them up. Woo! Open. Squeeze in and straighten. Last one, bring them up, open, bring them up, straighten. Woo, shake it out. All core work, right? Hip, hips as well, but a lot of core work. So this time we're gonna bring both legs up. We're gonna open, then we're gonna use those hands to grab feet or ankles if your knees allow and keep the feet lifted to a, a, a high baddha konasana. The knees are heavy, the knees are heavy, the shoulders are back and down. Breathe and then place those feet on the floor, seated baddha konasana. Be mindful of how this feels on the joints. Breathe. And then your hands are either resting on your ankles or your feet. Try not to pull up on your feet or the fingertips come slightly forward as you open up the shoulders, right? And feel, so just already all of that inner thigh work, it can really feel it um, as we um, have been stretching and strengthening those inner thighs. So open the shoulders, everybody, open the chest. It's really tempting to kind of do this thing. And we don't want to do that, even if the hands come out here, thanks for that right? Even if the hands are out here somewhere so that the chest shoulders can stay nice and wide. And then take a deep breath here and just feel this in your body. Again, knee issues, we're taking those feet out a whole bunch more. And something I didn't cue, but you can always use rolled um, washcloths behind the knees to help with that compression. All right, bring both knees in, straighten just your right leg. Take the left leg out. Final one here before we get up off our behinds. So Janusirsasana, the hips are level. You can take one block underneath that left knee to help support that. Because if your knee is hanging, right? And you might not think about this, but if that knee is hanging, then this joint has to work very hard. These muscles have to work really hard to keep it suspended like that. Um, so a block there releases that so that you can focus on this nice long leg, right? Inhale, everybody reach up. Exhale, swan dive forward, bring your nose toward your toes, square the foot, and then let the hands come down wherever they are. 
you are welcome to use a strap here to draw the foot back, to keep the shoulders open. You don't have to go low for Janu Sirsasana to be effective, right? Opening up that ham, uh, hamstring on that side and then lift, lift, lift up through the chest. Draw the shoulders back. Keep the head like level, right? So the tendency will be to pull that head toward the foot. And I don't want to do that. If anything, I'm moving this upper chest toward the foot and then breathe that's it if you have your strap take the strap so if you have the strap around your foot take the left hand if you're I'm mirroring here to the right foot strap and then just slightly turn toward the right okay so to the outside hip if you're not using your strap and you have the length you take the hand to the outside foot, square the foot, and then a slight twist to the right side. Relax your face, try not to reach with the head. Breathe. And release, come on up everybody. Draw that knee up, step over your right leg lift up very tall take the right arm around your knee and come into a seated twist ground the long leg ground your right leg and make it uh, feel it press into the floor and as you press that leg into the floor you lift up a little bit taller good release release if you can no hands lift straighten reach and drop it down shake it out good job all right same thing other side you're going to take your right into your version of janus or sasana again block under knee makes perfect sense for many of us lift up really tall maybe press foot into thigh thigh into foot inhale take it up exhale nice and forward and I always think of a swan dive because I want to stay as open as possible in the chest before I reach those hands down. Square the foot. <clears throat> Feel free to use your strap. Pause here as we ground through that long leg. Find your breath. <clears throat> Excuse me. And remember, it's the chest moving toward the foot. It's not the top of the head smile maybe right just see where you're gonna go on this side and then either you're using the strap with your right hand or you're using your right hand to hold the outside of your left foot coming into a little bit of a deeper uh, forward fold, but also a little bit of a twist. Keep both hips grounded through both sit bones. Breathe, everybody. Good. Release that hand. Take your torso up. Bring that knee up. Step over your long leg. Lift up super tall. Wrap the arm around and then come into a seated twist. Really ground that uh, long leg, everyone. Really keep it active. Keep the chest active. Open up both shoulders. It's a lovely, lovely day. We're going to enjoy this day. We're going to think good thoughts, productive thoughts. We're going to practice ahimsa. Release your twist. If you can, no hands. Lift, release, and straighten shake it out Woo. all right good job everyone have the blocks to the front of your mats you won't need your strap right now come to table pose hmm. so hands and knees just a few cats and cows to shake all that out right not quite sure how that felt for everybody so we're just going to shake out the spine move through uh one of or really two of the six known movements of the spine there might be eight but that's up to up for debate <laughs> and then come to a neutral spine make sure your knees are 
comfortable. Come on to your uh, blanket if you want more cushion on the knees. And then press the left leg back. And as soon as you do so, tone the belly. Good, open up the shoulders, keep the upper arms and upper shoulders active, lift the leg. And then simply just five to chest, take it in toward your chest and then press it out. Breathe nice and straight. It's just moving in and moving out. We got two more here. Squeeze it in, release, last one, squeeze in. Release five to opposite side. So try to bring it to your opposite elbow and bring it in, straighten it out, bring it in and across, out, in and across, out. Maybe some of you can touch that elbow last here, turn the toes out to the side, bring it to the outside, same side elbow. One, told you it was hips. Two, <laughs> three, and four, five, hold. If you can straighten the leg, drop that foot to the floor. Look at your right knee, your right knee and hip are lined up straight up and down. Walk the hands up, press the torso up. Here we are, gate pose. So in gate pose, that long leg is straight out from the hip. And again, I've kind of mentioned this a few times. For some teachers, they teach with you on the heel of that foot. And some teachers teach it more. The foot's more sideways. I know it's hard maybe for you to see. Do what feels good for your foot, ankle, and hip alignment, okay? Inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale, slide your left hand down the left leg. Reach up and over with the right arm, tone through the belly, keep the hips active. Find your smile and breathe. You got it. And then take both arms up. You're gonna take that, if your right knee is down, your right hand to your right hip. I realize you won't be able to see it because I'm sideways, but just to that hip, push into the hip to extend the, left arm up and overhead. So from your left toes to your left fingertips, you can slide the right arm down the leg if that feels okay for you, but it's a pretty low position. So be mindful and press up, both hands down to the floor, walk the hands back out, lift your leg, take it back behind you, hold, Balancing table, take that opposite arm out. Yep, feel the leg working. Feel that extended leg, hip, glute, quadricep, all that stuff working for you. And release hand, release knee. Walk the hands forward, press back. Let's just do a little bit of a puppy stretch here. Ah. <sighs> And come on up, press into both hands. We're gonna do the other side. The right leg presses back, squeeze in through the belly so that we lengthen that low back, take the leg up. Hold here and then five knee to chest, just bring it in, press it out. Bring it in, squeeze and out, good. Three, squeeze, four, Last one, five, squeeze, good. Go to opposite elbow, squeeze it across, press it out. Squeeze, press, and three, you got this. This is piece of cake. Four, <laughs> and five, press it out. Turn that foot out to the side, knee to elbow. One, two, you don't have to go that high, by the way. Three and four, good. Five, hold, extend the leg out, drop that foot comfortably, softly to the floor. Look at the left knee, find your alignment, walk the hands up and come on up. Ooh, 
Good, so good tone to the belly here. This hip leg nice and active. Inhale, take the arms up. As you exhale, right hand goes down the right knee. Don't put a lot of weight on that knee. I say that every time, but just as a reminder, I always think of caging a little butterfly underneath my fingertips so that it doesn't get hurt. Oh, feel that nice sweet stretch. And then take those arms up, take the left hand to the left outer hip, push the hip in to take the right arm over. If you feel great here, you can slide that arm down the leg and breathe. Take them up. <sighs> Exhale those hands down to the floor. Walk the hands out. Lift your right leg. Sail it back behind. Hold, squeeze the belly in. Left arm reaches out. Find your pose, everybody. You got it. And release, release. Walk those hands forward. Stretch out through puppy stretch. Come on up. Step your right foot forward. Grab your blocks. You can take the blocks second level. Optional here, come on off that left knee. Some of you are probably gonna be happy about that, right? That we've been on the, those knees for a while. So high lunge, low lunge, they're all good. They're both good. Keep your left hand where it is. Take the right arm up to the ceiling. Don't let the back foot turn out to the side. Breathe. You got it. Hold, press into your long heel so that left leg that's back, press into the heel, everybody, so that that leg gets a bit longer. Release your hand from your block. Listen up. You're going to turn your back foot to the side and you're going to take both blocks with you. Turn all your toes forward and come into a forward fold. You can take elbows to blocks if you've got that movement in the hamstrings. <sighs> Breathe. And then you're gonna turn yourself around. So you're gonna soften the knees. You're gonna walk those blocks to the other end of your mat. Shift your feet so that you are back in a lunge, knee up or knee down. If your knee is up, Press back into the heel, engage that leg. Your right hand stays on the block and your left arm goes up. Breathe. Notice if you wanna take that back heel and send it out to the side as you twist. Try to keep some levelness to the hips. Big deep breath. Release that hand. Come back to the middle, so walk your block. They're like extensions of your hands. Take yourself center, feet are wide. Hands are on blocks halfway up or you're coming down lower, possibly to your elbows. Squeeze the inner thighs. Find your breath. Bring your hands back to your blocks if you're low. Take the blocks up to the highest level. Turn the toes out, bend your knees, sit back in your pose, hands to knees, lift your torso. Oh yeah, don't you know it? Arms come up, bring the elbows to your hips, goddess pose. Really squeeze that belly, everybody. Try to keep the tailbone long, press into your legs. You don't have to be this deep. I know for some of my lovelies out there, those knees are not gonna like this. So you just come up higher, okay? It's not a big deal at all. All right, when you're ready, stand up straight, arms out, exhale, squat, inhale, lift, exhale, squat, inhale, lift, squeeze your butt, exhale, squat. We got one more, inhale, lift, exhale, squat. Hands come to your knees. The behind hips go back. The hands go back to your blocks. Turn them down low, everybody. 
straighten the legs enough to walk yourself back until that right foot is forward again. Press into your back leg, your knee is up or down. Lengthen your torso, tone the belly, hands come to knee, lift up. Woo! Inhale up, arms reach. Find your breath, really press through that leg. Breathe, find your pose, everyone. Exhale, your hands come back to your blocks. Here we go, change directions, walk your blocks, change your feet, go as slow as you need to. Good alignment, now your left foot is forward, the belly is toned, the chest is lifted, your right knee is up or down, hands to knee, lift your torso, <sighs> inhale the arms up, find your breath. Strong poses, everybody, no matter where you are. We're taking care of these bodies, we're strengthening them, we're stretching them, and we're practicing ahimsa, non-harming. Nice job, exhale, down we go. Walk yourself to the middle. Turn the toes out, take the blocks up to highest level. Halfway down. Bend the knees, goddess pose, four, five. Here we go. Bend the elbows. <sighs> Inhale up, squeeze. Exhale down. <sighs> Inhale it up. Exhale, we're almost done. Inhale up. Exhale, squeeze, watch the knees. Inhale it up. Down we go. I think we have one more. I kind of lost count there. Inhale. <laughs> Exhale, goddess pose. Take the hips back, hands come to your blocks. Lower them to second level. It's just a little more stable that way. And then straighten the knees as you walk yourself. Back to the front end of your mat where your right foot is forward. Find your breath here, lengthen your spine. Your left knee can be up or down, okay? Hands to knee. Lift up, open the shoulders. Here's where to get just a little trickier balance wise. I want you to squeeze those hips. Inhale, reach the arms up. <sighs> Breathe. Straighten your front leg and then bend it. If it's easier with your hands on hips, go ahead and do that. If it's easier, knee down, hands to blocks, do that. Straighten, squeeze. Bend the knee, got one more. Straighten, and then bend, straighten, hold. Hands come to hips. Reach through the back leg, hinge from your hips. Take the hands to the blocks. You can go blocks higher, by the way. <clears throat> Press into your back heel. Your back heel can be lifted or not. Open the shoulders. Variation here, pyramid pose. Find your breath. Bend your front knee. You know what's coming. Take a walk. Change sides. You're back in a lunge, left foot forward. I hope you're keeping it straight with me. Here we go, squeezing through the belly. Take those arms up. Knee up or knee down, you choose. Find that focus point, press into the back heel. That's actually gonna help your balance. And then you straighten the leg and bend. Straighten, yep, we got three more. Bend, straighten, bend. I hope you're smiling, not cussing under your breath here. And bend. Straighten, we got one more. Bend, straighten, and then um, straighten the leg, hands to hips, open the shoulders, hinge from those hips, hands to blocks. That one was a little quicker descent than I would have liked, but, but I got there. Press through your back heel, level out the hips, everybody. Find your breath. 
Just keep playing with those hips. The front leg hip often has to come back. The back leg hip often has to come forward a little bit. Bend your front knee. Walk those hip blocks back to the center, straight legs. Hold your forward fold. Knee blocks can be high or medium. You can take your elbows to the blocks if you'd like. Find your breath. We're almost done with this little flow. We don't do a ton of flow, but it is kind of fun. <sighs> Hands to blocks. Toes turn out. Bend the knees. Inhale, straight legs, straight arms. Exhale, goddess pose. <sighs> Just four more, and I swear we won't do any more. Down. <sighs> Inhale up. Be strong here. Exhale down, lift it up, take it down. Last one, and down, hold if you can. Hands come to knees, I want the hands to the inside thighs. Push the thighs out and resist. So knees are pushing in, hands are pushing out. Switch sides, hands go to the outside. Push those knees into your hands. That is harder for me than the other way. Good, stand up, Woo, hallelujah. Turn the toes forward, hinge at the hips. Walk your blocks back to the right. Come back to your lunge, stay low. Blocks are either medium or high. Straighten your front leg. Hold your pyramid pose. You can flex that front foot if you want to activate the front shins a little bit more, but you don't have to. Just keep that leg nice and parallel. Open the shoulders, everyone. Tone the belly. All right, listen up. You're going to bend your front knee. You're going to walk your blocks forward. You're going to short hop up and then straighten your front knee to lift your back. Just keep that leg level with the hip. No more, no less, no. <laughs> Just try to get it to the level of the hip or lower. Breathe, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Bend the front knee, slowly lower the back. Walk your blocks back. Turn your feet, walk center. And to the left, you're back in your lunge. Find your breath, straighten your front leg. Roll that front hip back, find pyramid pose. Open the shoulders, everyone. <sighs> nice long back of the neck and really press through the back leg. There's your energy, right? As we ground that back leg, we find a little more freedom in the front hip. And then bend your front knee, walk your blocks forward, tone your belly, and when you're ready, push to lift. Breathe. Feel the legs working, everyone. You got this, you got this. Strengthening those bones, strengthening those muscles. Bend the knee, slow, slow, slow. Try to drop that foot, walk the blocks back. And then come to center. We are done with all that. Your hands are to your blocks or your elbows are to your blocks. And breathe. Squeeze the inner thighs gently toward each other. Try to stay weighted in the middle of your feet. It's real easy to drop into the heels here. Just stay weighted. That's it. And then take your hands to your blocks. Take the blocks up nice and high, all the way to their highest level. Heel toe those feet in. So their hips width apart, hold here, forward fold. Your hands are either on your block, 
Maybe your elbows reach. Please don't force that. Woo, feel those lovely hammies. Good, hands to blocks, everybody. Bend both knees, hands to knees. Come on up. Woo. Good, shake it out. Move your blocks out of the way. We have one more balance pose. You'll want your strap for this. So if you wanna be near a wall, a pole, a piece of furniture, all that's good. You're gonna take your strap around your left foot. I'm not gonna mirror here just so I can keep it straight, okay? So hang in there with me. So left foot, reach down on that strap, bend the knee. Now, some of you are gonna stay with a bent knee, okay? Or let's all start with a bent knee. Stand tall. If you're using something to help with balance, your right hand's gonna be on that wall or on that piece of furniture. Otherwise it can be hip or wherever you would like. Take the strap to the inside of your knee. Take the knee out to the side. Take the other arm up. Yep, stand tall. Step down at any time. And if you're gonna step down, if your balance is, you're starting to lose balance, let go of that strap, please. Take the knee to center. Take the strap to the outside. Hold the strap, goodness gracious, with your right hand and extend out. We did all of this on the floor. Breathe, hold, lift your chest really tall. Push into your standing leg, right? Both feet are squared. Bend the knee and just release, shake it out. And just kind of shake that hip. Watch the toes though. Good, other side, you're gonna wrap that strap around your right foot. I tend to reach down low on the strap so I don't have a lot of it hanging. I'm just trying to find a solid block here and lift the knee. Find your focus, the strap is to the inside, tone the belly, really engage that leg. Take the knee out to the side and opposite arm up. Squeeze your standing leg, everybody. Really make it strong and try to smile while focusing. Good, knee to the outside, take it across. Breathe, extend out if you'd like. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Strap's hard. There you go, Whew. you got it. Don't watch me, <laughs> cause you'll fall and bring it center. <laughs> and shake it out and relax <laughs> let's let's ditch the str the strap <laughs> open up the shoulders I always for some students the strap is really helpful and for others like me it just throws everything off a little bit more back to your right foot open up your shoulders <sighs> bend your left leg take the hands underneath and breathe extend out if you can if that is really hard, I want you to stay bent, okay? Take the left hand to the inside, take it out. Woo, stand tall. Bring it center, bend, grab it with your other hand, extend out. <laughs> drop the left hip, I'm not mirroring, so drop that extended leg's hip. Take it center, Woo. let go, drop it down. Shake, shake, shake. Here we go, other side. And then we're done with all that. We'll stretch it all out. All right, stand strong on that left. Bend the right, hands underneath. Find your pose. Extend out. Breathe. Remember, you can stay bent or even half bent with the knee. Take it on the inside. Extend out, find your breath, take it center, switch sides, goodness, there we go, <laughs> and take it center, <sighs> shake it up, 
Uh, it might be. Yeah, John said it's the double mat. I don't usually have a double mat out here, but uh, it is what it is. Ahimsa, right? Come on back to the front of your mat. Open up your shoulders. Take it up. Exhale all the way down. Can you believe it? Our first downward missing dog. Pedal it out, everybody. And just hold. So if you tend to have your hands narrow, I'd like to suggest that you take those hands toward the edges of your mat. My pinky, the end knuckle of my pinky is actually wrapped around the edges of my mat. And just see how that feels and how it helps you engage those shoulders. Find your breath, just hold your pose here. If you can, if you can't, drop down to knees, no biggie. Tippy toes, knees down, child's pose or any variation, sideline child's pose I really like, or come to your back. And just kind of feel, if you are in child's pose, feel the compression of the thighs, the shins, the thighs, the belly, right? All through the center of your body. Good. And then come to your belly. All the way down. Oh. All the way, all the way, relax your upper body. I'm keeping my chin up just so I can talk so you can have your forehead on your hands. Lengthen both legs out from the hip and then find that pubic bone and press the pubic bone down. Lift the left leg, just hold. It's not high, then the leg is straight, the knee is straight. Breathe. Just hold. Try to keep the upper body pretty neutral, okay? So you're not over lifting your chin or anything like that. And then lower that leg down, switch sides, press into the pubic bone, the hip bone, and lift the leg. Don't overlift. If you overlift, take the hip with it. And relax. Bend the left knee and just bring that heel in and out, but bring it in on purpose. So I want you to feel a squeeze of that hamstring as you bring that heel in and straighten. So we did a ton of stretching for the hamstrings. I wanna re-engage those muscles because we don't want to just stretch, right? We wanna stretch and strengthen, squeeze and squeeze. Good, next time that knee is bent to any degree, hold. Press the pubic bone down. See if you can lift the hip off the floor or the knee off the floor. Breathe. You got it. Keep squeezing. If you cramp, you can let go. <laughs> lower the knee, lower the foot. Switch sides. So just a simple bend, squeeze on purpose, and then straighten. Squeeze. If you think about the muscle that you are working, it can really help. So we're squeezing the back of the thigh, the hamstring muscles. Squeeze, feel that engagement, and let go. Good. Keep that up. Squeeze. You got it. Maybe your breath is back to a normal, regular breathing. Maybe you're even smiling a little bit as you squeeze. All right, last one, squeeze and hold. Lengthen the front of that thigh. Lift the knee if you can. If your knee doesn't come off the floor, just use the muscles that would be required to lift. So we don't just do nothing, right? We do something. <sighs> squeeze and squeeze it, everybody. You got it. And let go. Ooh, straighten it out. Lift up to Sphinx pose. 
Nice length through the tailbone, right? Tone in through the belly, feel the pose. Optionally here, I want you to bend both knees. That's optional. If you feel that in your low back only, then uh, don't want you to go there. Really have to tone in through the belly and it's almost like you're trying to press the pubic bone, that bottom edge of that pubic bone toward the floor. And release. Good, lower the upper body. Final option here, bend both knees. Your knees or hips width apart, point the toes. One, you're here. Two, you're gonna press through the pubic bone, reach the arms back. Don't have to touch anything. You're just pulling the shoulders back, reaching the arms back. Third option, you find your feet and come into bow pose. <sighs> Stretching the quads, which we worked a bunch. Engaging the hamstrings, little back bend here. Five, four, three, two, one, lower. And release, oh, good. Roll onto one side. Just one side, bend the knees. Use your hand, your arm for a pillow, or if your block is nearby, you can use the block at the second, uh, at the first level for a little pillow for your head, a little hard pillow, but it, it does the work. Now you're on your side, whichever side you're on is fine. Flex your feet. Lift your top knee off your bottom knee, but don't roll. <clears throat> Just the knee, not the foot. Just the knee, not the foot, yep. And then push that knee up toward the ceiling as if you were gonna squeeze it up to a wall and then lower it down. Just two more here. Squeeze, but don't roll. Keep those hips stacked and down. Last one, lift, squeeze, hold that. Lift the foot so it's level with the knee. And then lift the whole shin, the whole lower leg up, 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 up. So that you're still on your side, the knee is bent and then lower it down. Good, from here, lift straight up. Don't turn the foot, don't turn the heel. And down, one more, squeeze it straight up. Extend the leg out, lower it toward the floor. And then last three, one, two, little pulse, three, and lower down everybody. Good, turn to the other side. Make sure your torso is comfortable, your knees are bent. The feet knees are stacked on top of each other. Just simply lift the top knee. Don't roll, keep pushing the bottom leg down so it's not going far. And lower, do this is two, squeeze and lower. Last one, lift, squeeze, hold. Lift the lower part of that leg so it's level with the top part or level with the knee. And then lift up, try to stay in the side hip and down, lift up and down. One more, squeeze it, stay right in that side hip. You should feel that. Extend the leg out so it's gonna look a little diagonal. Tone the belly, don't roll the hip back. And then pulse for three, one, two, three, bend the knee and release. Move the block out of the way. Come on to your back. Knees are bent. Left leg goes up to the air, external rotation. Come to figure four. We're not gonna be here for long. Either you stay right here with right foot to the floor or you draw the knees to your chest. Big deep breath, smile, smile. Thank your body for your practice today. Thank yourself for 
practicing ahimsa, non-harming. Release that side. Take the right leg up, external rotation, bend the knee, come to figure four on this side. Soften, soften. And release that side, both knees to chest. Lower the knees to the left again, a short little twist here. We've done a couple of twists through the practice. And then release that side, come on up, go to the other side, nice and easy here. Nice soft breath. Bring the knees to center, squeeze them into chest. Extend one leg out nice and long. Extend the other leg out nice and long. Come into Shavasana. Maybe the hands go to the hips just for a second to see if they feel level to you. And then relax the legs fully, relax the arms fully. And maybe as we drift to Shavasana, we can think of one thing today that we can practice in Ahimsa by taking care of ourselves. Maybe by doing something special for yourself that brings nurturing and kindness. Relax your jaw. Relax the thinking mind. Feel your body melt down to your mat. Soften the jaw, soften the belly. Relax even more.
And as you're ready, everyone, if you're ready, start to wiggle your toes, your fingers. Slowly bend the knees, draw your knees toward your chest. Rock side to side until the knees roll to one side or the other, curl into seedling pose, fetal pose. We plant the seeds of our practice, our life. And then when you're ready, press all the way up. Find your seated pose. Bring your hands to your heart and bow to your own inner wisdom, your own inner gifts of love and compassion and joy. Let's practice ahimsa today within and without. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.